I guess I'll do my welcome. I'm Allison Harris. I'm with the Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association. I do our uh, marketing, our public relations, um, kind of do everything. I do some admin stuff. <laughs> I'm running around like crazy over there. Um, but uh, yeah, we were putting on this event with Rewalk today to kind of talk about um, their Exocell 10 and um, how people in our community can use it, um, insurance stuff. Matt's going to go into all that. But um, I have some of my coworkers on with me today. I have Sharon Malone and Karen Halgren. And um, yeah, we're with the Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association. And um, we are a non organization based in um, Central Phoenix area. Um, we focus on um, physical, spiritual, emotional, social recovery for people who have sustained a spinal cord injury. Um, we have a bunch of different programs people can be a part of. We have outreach events, peer mentor support, um, bunch of stuff. We can uh, go on our website so you guys can see all the different kinds of things that we provide. Um, we have a huge a list of resources like physicians, government programs, durable medical equipment, all sorts of resources for people who um, are newly injured and don't really know where to turn or where to look. Our website's a great start for that. And um, yeah, we're basically here just to be a helping hand and a friendly face for people who um, are newly injured with a spinal cord injury. And um, yeah, we, we love meeting new people. We love doing events. We actually just started doing um, in-person events again, which is super exciting. We had uh, two last April and we're planning, yeah, I know, right? And we're planning some more for later this summer, um, but we're also still doing some virtual events. Um, for example, we have our bingo night, which we've been doing virtually for the almost the past year, but before COVID we did them in person. And um, so actually virtual is a great opportunity for people who may not live in Arizona. I know some of you um, don't live in Arizona. So if you wanna attend our bingo nights, just go to our website and you can look at our um, social rec page and you can join us for bingo it's a really fun night we play like um full 10 games of bingo and you can win prizes it's usually money or gift card prizes and it's super fun so yeah we just like to keep it fun over here um sharon karen if you have anything to add you can but that's kind of who we are and um again my name is allison and you can find all of our info on our website if you wanted to reach out to me and had any other questions for me or karen or sharon Nope, you covered Nothing pretty much everything. You covered pretty Excellent. much everything. <laughs> Excellent. In a, in a Allison, what, <laughs> in a Allison, what what is your your website? I apologize. I actually did not plug it in oh, yeah. the uh, PowerPoint. Yeah, I can say That's... it and I will also type it. It's www.azspinal.org. I will type it here in the chat so everyone can take a visit if they would like. Perfect. Um, and uh, I'll also put my name and my email just in case anyone wants to reach out and ask about any of our programs or anything like that. For sure. Um, and you guys also have a really uh, active Facebook page too, right? We do. We have a Facebook page. Feel free to follow us there. Um, we post a lot about our upcoming events and kind of just fun things going around the community. We like to post um, other organizations that kind of do similar things to us, their info too, just to, you know, keep everyone in the loop, what's going on in the, the disability community. So um, I'll put our Facebook here too, just in case anyone wants to check it Perfect. out. Yeah. Thanks a lot, All Allison, right. that's great. All right, there we go. Perfect, all right, I will take it from here. Um, Oh, real quick. Sorry Thank to interrupt. For... Did I just say it to the yeah. panelists or did I not send it to everyone? It looks like I just did to the panelists. Uh, Can the attendees yeah, see my us. info? Okay, I'll send it. I'll resend it all again. Sorry. Go ahead, Matt. <laughs> no no worries. To all panelists. Yeah, there we go. I'm, I'm changing it to everyone. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So here's the topics we're going to cover today. Um, for anyone that is just joining us or has been in since uh, we just started these, this webinar, uh, there is a Q&A that you can type some questions in and I'd be happy to cover any specifics. I do ask that uh, we don't get too in the weeds regarding any personal situations. Um, if you do have personal needs you'd like to cover, we do have a specific contact page on our website that I will uh, link to at the end of the presentation. Um, but here's what we're going to cover. We're going to talk briefly about what a rewalk personal 
exoskeleton is, um, how to determine if you qualify for one. We're going to cover a rewalk clinic day. Um, maybe some reasons why you'd want to use a rewalk exoskeleton. Cover the really important question, the insurance coverage of a rewalk exoskeleton. And then um, what can we do if you don't qualify either physically or for insurance or anything like that? So we'll touch on all those topics. Uh, first and foremost, what is a rewalk personal exoskeleton? We refer to it as a P6.0. Um, this device is actually one of four that we now carry, but in, in particular, this device is a powered exoskeleton, meaning it has powered hip and knee motion, motors in each hip, hip and each knee, which enables individuals with spinal cord injuries to stand upright, walk, and turn. Um, for our international folks, it can actually uh, climb stairs as well. This was cleared by the FDA for personal ownership and use at home and in the community. Um, it also has a CE designation too in Europe. So in the US here, the qualifications for use, it is intended for use by people with spinal cord injuries um, and is intended for home and community use to restore ambulatory function. In general, the candidates that would qualify would have these following characteristics. Hands and shoulders can support crutches or a walker. Um, a lot of times I expand on that as if, if you're doing transfers on your own, that's a good uh, indication or if you're driving. Um, healthy bone density, which will, will be determined by your referring physician. Um, if your skeleton does not suffer for any fractures, this, this is more along the lines of current fractures. We don't want you standing on your legs if your legs have a healing fracture at the moment, but if we understand some people after their injury, they might have sustained a fracture during their injury. But if it's healed and you're cleared to walk, we will uh, go ahead and go forward with it. Um, able to stand using a device such as a standing frame. Personally, I like to see people able to tolerate standing for 20 to 30 minutes before they start pursuing an exoskeleton. Um, general good health, meaning you're doing things to stay healthy, um, you know, considering your diet, exercise routine, and sleep and all that good stuff. And um, if you need help with that, we're always happy to help refer you to um, people like Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association or your local therapist or physician. Um, and then the basic physical requirements is a height between five foot three, six foot two, and a weight does not exceed 222 pounds. The 222 pounds, 100 kilograms are probably the greatest like hard, hard cut off. The height is more a determination of your leg length. And if you're kind of like, if you're a little shorter than 5'3", a little taller than 6'2", um, I'd say we'd want to get you in to uh, at least get evaluated and measured to see if maybe uh, your leg length is within those parameters. Um, so now we're going to go on to a rewalk clinic day. So this is something that we've been doing for many, many years. So we're partnered with many facilities and um, all over the country in the U.S. We've got, um, I'm not exactly sure the amount of amount of hospitals and affiliated uh, clinics, but I think it's over a hundred. Um, and then you can see on this map, we actually have people all over, all over the world. So for our international folks, if you go to our website and click on the locations, you'll see this map and then look up where you're at and see if there's any affiliated clinics nearby that you could um, be referred to. Um, <clears throat> and just a uh, an offshoot of that conversation is if if you go on this site and there's no one nearby um, and this is mostly pertaining to our probably US based folks is if they're if you're in somewhere in we'll say Wyoming Montana you know and there there's nowhere nearby if you have a facility that you think might be a good candidate to be a partner with rewalk we'd be happy to uh, be introduced to them to learn more about their needs for their facility and see if a clinic day is appropriate and a, and a good partnership for uh, both us and them. So we'd be happy to uh, get that help from you. Um, but 
let's review what a clinic day is. So, and a clinic day is basically an opportunity to experience walking in an exoskeleton. As a client or a patient, you get a two hour session to be personally fitted for an exoskeleton stand and then walk in it. Um, and then after you walk in it, you get to decide, is this something that fits in my lifestyle? Um, and if it is, you can then gain access to our rewalk case management team. Um, and if Sharon's still on the call at the end of this, I might have her speak to that because I know she's had some experience working with us and our case management team. Um, and also what, what I really like about the clinic day program is I'm a physical therapist myself. And what it does is it gives you access to obtain specialized physical therapy. So when you go, if you haven't been to physical therapy in a while, it's an opportunity for a trained clinician to get eyes on you that specialize in exoskeleton use. So then they can center your, your new treatment um, or your current treatment around some of your ambulatory and exoskeleton walking goals. Um, one other thing I would like to mention about this slide real quick is if you go to our website, there's these tabs on the side, you can easily access our social media. You can even call us, get our phone number. This uh, folder right here envelope is a contact us page. You can fill that out and you'll be in contact with one of your local reps, usually within a, a day or two or three, um, depending on where they are, if they're traveling or not. Sometimes I know myself, I, I get a little behind when I'm on the road. Um, and then if you have a device, you can actually call for service. All right, so now how do we, how can you get a rewalk? I mean, that's probably one of the most common questions is how, how, how do I, how do I obtain one? Um, so this is kind of a step-by-step -step direction of what we go through. And when you fill out a, uh, a screening contact form, this is what your local rep is gonna kind of walk you through is um, sometimes one and two can be flip-flops. Sometimes you'll reach out to us and you'll do a phone screening with a rewalk clinical specialist. And then we'll decide if you meet some of the criteria that we covered on the slide a couple of slides ago. And then we'll refer you, refer you to your healthcare provider to then get a, uh, a prescription. Um, once we get that prescription and maybe even a bone density scan, depending on how long ago it's been since you've got your bone density scanned, um, you'll get a referral for a rewalk evaluation um, by a certified physical therapist. And that is done at one of those partnering facilities facilities that I um, kind of showed you on that last slide. After that, we will schedule you and probably one, two, or three other people to uh, be scheduled for a day that your local rewalk, rewalk representative will bring a demo device out for all of you to try. Like I said, you get a two-hour session. You get to really see uh, what it's like to be in an exoskeleton. Take, some people take, you know, the walk a thousand feet in one session. Some people won't walk as far. There's really no expectation or standard for who's good and who's bad. It's really just an, a way to experience and see, see what it's like. Um, and then if you decide to move forward, steps five, six, seven, and eight will pertain to you. So you'll get access to our rewalk reimbursement support. I'll cover that in a little bit more detail, I think on the following slides. And then um, if that reimbursement support becomes a positive outcome, um, then we deliver a personal system to you at your local training facility. You'll go through your training, which is a list of basic and advanced skills. And those skills are really to just um, make sure that you're safe using it in all different settings. And then once you are, your therapist will sign you off and you will take it home and you'll be able to use it how you wish. Um, when you are at home in the community, the FDA does require that you're walking with a uh, trained companion. That companion doesn't need to be trained on exactly how to walk with you or anything like that. They just need to be there. So if something does happen, it is a piece of technology and just like a car or anything else, things can go wrong. We want someone there with you to make sure uh, if something does go wrong, you have support if needed. Um, one question I do often get about that, that piece is, um, what, what happens if you fall? And first and foremost is um, we do a lot of training to make sure that you don't fall. Um, 
But if you do, there are different steps that you will be able to go through to then learn how to take the device off and then transfer into your chair. So this is a piece where we really want to make sure you're you're independent at a wheelchair level and make you're 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 really functioning at a at a pretty high independence level from your wheelchair before you get in an exoskeleton because of these different safety reasons. <coughs> All right. So why sorry about that. Why um would you want to use an exoskeleton? What are the benefits? Um, so this is just a list of some of the studies. Um, some of these are uh, an aggregation of many studies, but these are the common benefits that have been seen in the research. And these are all pretty common that I see anecdotally um, throughout my four years working with the company. Um, so improve physical activity, bowel and bladder pain reduction, spasticity reduction, improve sleep, which all these together usually improve quality of life. Um, no one can really tell you which one you're gonna get. Some people have spasticity issues, some people don't. Some people have pain, some people don't. Some people have bowel issues that take them a long time to, to do their bowel program or use their, um, or they're, use, they're emptying their bladder many times throughout the day. I've seen changes in all these things. There's really no saying what it's gonna be. So that's why I encourage anyone and everyone that qualifies to just go out and try an exoskeleton, see how it's going to benefit you. Um, what a lot of the research these days is showing is that if you do use an exoskeleton, you are going to get benefit from it. Um, it's just a matter of using it. All right, so reimbursement support. So in the U.S., we have a case-by-case -case rewalk reimbursement support. Um, that includes benefits investigation. We're happy to do a benefits investigation before you even try it, if that's a barrier to access for you. If you don't want to go through all those steps to just find out, you can't even talk to your insurance about covering it, we can do a benefits investigation. Um, and then the way we ask for reimbursement is through a prior authorization. Um, prior authorization is just a way of making sure that they agree to cover it before we ship it. Um, and then if you want to go through an appeals process, we help guide you through that. We have letters and everything to help help with that process and make sure that you're really getting a fair chance of having a conversation with your insurance company about coverage. Um, preferred payers, VA and TRICARE, um, we have policies with them. Workers' Compensation, Michigan Auto and Auto Insurance are also typically cover we call them preferred payers because we do have policies or high um acceptance rates with these with these companies um and the caveat here is to me every everyone's a preferred payer because what we're trying to do is make exoskeletons more accessible to everyone we don't want it to be limited because of how much money someone has or what kind of insurance they have we really want it to be everyone and kind of my uh, my soapbox statement here is without without interest there's no market so we have to create the demand and that demand needs to be coming from our clinicians our caretakers our patients um, everyone in the disabled community to just really provide um, a voice for for the people that that could benefit from an exoskeleton and we really don't know who exactly is going to benefit from it till you get in it? So you might as well try it. Um, but we can submit to most third-party payers um, depending on the individual plan benefits. Um, the exception is just like a straight Medicare plan or a straight Medicaid plan. Um, another quick update regarding reimbursement. This isn't. This is a huge step in the right direction. It hasn't really changed policies per se yet, and we it's been too early to tell. But as of uh, middle of last year, we were actually, we, we worked to get a uh, CMS or HICS PICS code with Medicare. And I know these are terms that most people probably don't understand, but basically it's an identifier code for um, exoskeletons. So when we do ask your insurance for coverage, they're, they're able to know what you're asking for instead of before, for many years, we were sending it in with a miscellaneous code. So. We don't know how, that's not a payment code, but it is an identifier code. So it's a step in the right direction. People are listening and 
the acceptance is uh, becoming more broad. And then to close it out here um, on my talking end is let's consider some alternative options. So we are working with um, different uh, nonprofits to help with fundraising. And that can include actually um, helping talk with your employers, uh, HR company. Um, we, we've had different uh, companies actually help provide fundraising for people that work for them. So there's all sorts of different options. We've kind of seen it all. We've seen people raise money through Facebook, all stuff like that. But what we're really talking about is we're actually working with specific companies to help you with fundraising. And uh, again, that's on a case by case basis. So we'll cover that with you personally. Um, but that is an option that, that we are working on. And we're really, we're really excited about it because it's, it's going to provide more access for people than, than what we had before. Um, sometimes people won't qualify because of range of motion issues, bone density, strength, just different things like that. Use that as an opportunity to get better, get into physical therapy work. Like I said, with a, a trained rewalk therapist that knows how to get you into a exoskeleton program and reach your goals of walking um, with an exoskeleton. And another really exciting option that we just, uh, we just partnered with this company called Myelin last year. So Myelin actually created an FES cycle. Um, and for you guys that don't know what an FES cycle is, it's basically a home exercise bike that provides electrical electrical stimulation to your legs to help power that bike and what's really neat about the myelin is that it's actually it uses a technology called isokinetic cycling um and really what that is is it's it's adaptive to the person that's using it so if you need all the assistance it's going to give you all the assistance if you can power it yourself it's going to provide resistance and say you're one of those people that don't have any use of your legs any control over them um, as far as pedaling goes, those electrodes can actually help you power the bike. And then once you reach a certain power, it's gonna give you resistance. So it's gonna be a really good strength and endurance training for you. Um, and just some of the main things that FES cycling and the mile cycle is, is really good at doing is preventing atrophy. Um, so helping build muscle, increasing the range of motion. So this could be another tool that could help you get into the um, the indicated population for an exoskeleton, increase the blood flow in your legs and relax muscle spasms. Um, and what's really awesome about myelin is I think FES cycles, uh, as a clinician myself, I, I was not a big fan of them because of the accessibility. But now that I know about myel cycle, they're, uh, they're actually a much lower cost, a fraction of the cost of other FES bikes, and they actually have a um, a full reimbursement team similar to us. So, I believe their acceptance rate, as far as getting insurance coverage, is like in the thirty to forty percent range. Um, so it's pretty good, and they're great people, and it's a great product. Um, so from here, let's go to. Let's go to any of the Q&A we might have. If anyone has any questions, I don't see any questions written. Might be some in the chat. Um, don't see any in the chat. So another resource I just want to point you guys to while maybe you're coming up with questions. Maybe you don't, maybe I answered all your questions. I don't know. <laughs> but our, our YouTube is actually, we, we've spent a lot of time providing a lot of great resources for both clinicians and patients. There's a lot of really good things on there, a lot of cool topics. We're interviewing Jill, who's actually on this call, Jill, and uh, some of our other folks on the marketing team have been interviewing leading clinicians all over the country on different neuro rehab topics. So if you're nerds like us, you can check <laughs> and that we're also, out. We're adding a like for our patients category. So we've started off targeting for clinicians and built a lot of content around that. But in the next few months, keep checking back. We're going to start. We already have a, a bunch of stuff planned out to start targeting for things for um, the patients and sort of families and everybody else as well. So yeah, definitely um, sign on there and, and follow along as we all sort of like grow into this exciting new field. 
for sure. Technology is one of those things that is, is, is just growing rapidly and it really is not going to go away. So um, we want to be, be the help to help everyone adopt it in a meaningful way. Um, we, we have a really cool team of clinicians and, um, you know, working with people like the Arizona Spinal Cord Injury Association is just, it just makes that job so much more fun because we get access to, uh, you know, talk, talk to more people in groups like this and um, then also get to participate in some of their really fun events. Like I know uh, I really have a good time at the AZ um, Push Forward Conference every year. I'm really hoping that it, it's going to go through at the end of this year. Yeah. I get to see everyone we're all there. set. Yeah, we're all set to have it in October. So um, yeah, we're hoping we get a good turnout this year. We had to postpone it a few times now. So <laughs> we're hoping for October to be a go. Um, and speaking of YouTube, we're actually building up our YouTube um, library as well. We're a little bit newer to YouTube, but um, what we've been doing recently is uploading all of our previous um, educational virtual classes we did last year since everything was via Zoom. Um, we're actually in the process of building up our library of hosting all those videos. Um, there's a bunch of different topics, um, secondary conditions, um, healthy eating, whole bunch of stuff. So if you wanna check out our YouTube as well, um, yeah, we're, we're really working on building it up, <laughs> getting more of a, a variety of videos on there for you guys, so. That's awesome. One other thing I guess I could plug is on Facebook, we actually have a group of, we call them rewalkers. So there are people that, the most of them are people that own rewalks, but I think it's a really great resource for someone that is interested, but maybe they have questions they don't want to talk to. I understand there's a stigma since I'm a vendor and I work for the company, you know, you might think I'm trying to blow smoke up your leg or something like that. So if you wanted to join the rewalker group, um, you could probably get some really good, uh, some really good insight from people. And we actually did a, uh, one of our YouTube videos recently, we interviewed four people that have rewalks at home and they talked about their experience uh, using it at home. Looks like we have a chat. Oh, I think it's from Karen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, for the um, push forward, yeah. Yeah, I'll send you the vendor form and email me. I don't know if I have your email address. I okay. may. Yeah, here, I'll just, I'll, <laughs> I'll type it in and that way anyone on this call can see it. But um, another, I didn't put LinkedIn on this slide, but I know everyone that works in our company, they have a LinkedIn page. So anyone that is watching this, that is interested in connecting with us on LinkedIn, I know that's the best way to contact me through social media um, is LinkedIn. Oh, we do have a Q&A. Oh, yay. So, Sean, what is the highest level SCI that you have been successful with? Um, so that really, let's see, I'd say my highest level of success, I think it was like a C7 incomplete injury. I'd say um, C6, yeah. The VA has experimented some, uh, and I was going to say C6. Definitely incomplete, though, yeah. Yeah. It all depends on tricep strength, hand grip. Um, a few other things like that for sure and and really a lot of people I think get discouraged because of the lack of trunk control at higher levels and uh that's kind of been something that I I've I've worked on to educate like I've, I've worked with people to like reteach them how to use their trunk and what's really neat about using an exoskeleton is um if you if you lack some of that trunk control if you get up and start walking i see a lot of people a lot of those muscles turn on because when you're sitting all day those muscles are kind of at a mechanical disadvantage um and then once you get up and walking the way we're intended to be standing um some of those muscles might turn on you might be surprised i don't know if I'm sharon's interested. still on the call but um you said Sharon's had some experience with the exoskeleton, right, Matt? She's had experience with the exoskeleton yeah. and, she, and she's had experience working with our reimbursement team. We haven't had success yet, which I, I guess right. I should plug that is we don't make any <laughs> guarantees. I, I don't want to make this seem like we have any guarantees about the process. What we will guarantee is really good customer service and just really good <laughs> communication. Um, 
but like I said, we're, uh, you we're guys still are a great, a great team. And, a, you know, really advocate for, you know, people with, you know, the spinal cord injuries, everybody's great as a great team and, um, great with follow-up great with, you know, working with the reimbursements, having all that documentation and so forth, that it's really a, a very simple process. It's just, yeah, how the reimbursement is can be insurance, and it's not. It's not has anything to do with Reebok. It's insurance. They are the roadblocks to you know um, getting these devices because they really are beneficial. I highly encourage everyone to do you know at least try it, um, regardless um, of you know um, a level. You'll you'll really benefit from it. You'll really see that it's quite a, an, an amazing device. So I hope to see it and do it again soon. Let's yeah. do it, Sharon. I'd be happy yep. to. You always told me you needed to have a Sharon speed on it, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, are, you are natural at it. <laughs> and, and like I said, there, there's really no expectation. There's a lot of people that come in with these expectations because they see videos online of all these people walking in like, fields or walking in the grocery store and they're like oh that looks so easy um i'm sure sharon can speak to um, <laughs> maybe the ease or not ease of using yeah. it um at first i mean it's always going to be new you know new it's the getting up and and when you first get it up and 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 balancing um that um you just it just it's a matter of practice the people that you do see uh, on the videos, they've been doing it for, you know, quite some time. So you do need to continue it. But it's what's great is I would, you know, I'm going to say when I get it. So then if I get it, when I get it, it's going to okay. be an integral, you know, part of my physical therapy. When I, I go to physical therapy still and I'm in nine years post, you know, injury, I still go to physical therapy. I want to have that as part of my routine in physical therapy so that it's a continuous thing because everything is about muscle memory. So if you continue to do something over and over and over, the easier it is going to be, you know, for you to, to actually, you know, walk in the device. But if anyone has questions about, you know, since I've been in the device, they can always, you know, email me as well. I'll put the, your email, Sharon. Sharon, at azspinal.org. I'll put it in the chat for you, Sharon. Yeah. I'd be happy to answer anything. Sharon's also user. a peer mentor, and she's a, she's a great person to go to. Well, we, <laughs> we can close this out with a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers yes. out there. That's... Thank you. Yeah. Thank happy you. Happy Mother's Day. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This was great. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great weekend.